another week, another episode of the J1 League Goal Zone Show, where we bring you non stop action from Japan's top division. One month since the league resumed, and there has been no shortage of goals for fans all around the world. On the cards for round eight, we have the champions Marinos traveling to face Sendai at the Yurtek Stadium, and the top two teams Kawasaki and Gamba face off at the Panasonic Stadium Suita. Urawa were at home to Shimitsu S Pulse and Hokkaido with the only game on Sunday welcoming Vissel Kobe at the Sapporo Dome. We start with the Yokohama F Marinos. The champions yet to win on the road this season were up against a Vigalta Sunday outfit who had not tasted victory in all four of their home games so far. Both sides looking for a change in fortune then at the Yurtek Stadium. Shazad Huck with your match commentary. Sekiguchi losing the ball and a chance here. Oh, he opened himself up. Amano looking for the far post. That is their best opportunity. Good ball in. Tiraton. Well, what was he doing there in the first place? But a, a lovely bit of work from him. Lovely ball in, Nagasawa tried to just stab it in and good goalkeeping from Park Hill-Kyu. Plenty of space down this right hand side from Mizunuma. Oh, it's a good save from Slovic. It looked to be a certain goal for Yokohama F. Marinos. comes to Hachisuka, now Rio Jermaine, Fiji takes the chance, well took that very well and required Park Hill Gyu to make the save. Good ball, can they finish off, oh he opened himself up and that could have been the chance, the chance they needed. Hachisuka, Onside Nagasawa, Hachisuka, oh and that again was at the perfect height for the keeper, either side of him and that surely would have been the opening goal. Not too bad at. now Tiraton, a minute left. Up here with the touch, oh they've got the goal, Marco Julio, right to the very end. It came off the header from Tawia. Not the best clearance. And that is a cruel, cruel blow for Sendai, but absolute delight for Yokohama F. Marinos. But no mistake from Marcos Jr. Boy, they've missed him, and he makes a difference. They'll say they deserve to get this, but you've got to feel for Sendai right at the very end of this game. Finally breached. Well, it's heartbreak for the home side who fought so hard and defended brilliantly, had their opportunities as well. And the full time score at the Yurtek Stadium. It's Vegata Sendai nil, Yokohama F. Marinos won. At the NHK Spring Mitsuzawa Stadium, and another two teams struggling to find good form. Yokohama FC were up against Sanfrecce Hiroshima both sides without a win from their last four matches. Wonderful chance for Sanfrecce just eight minutes in, Hayao Kawabe with the ball in and Shunki Higashi on the edge of the six-yard box really should have done better. Ten minutes later, Hayato Araki heads the corner on to the far post but Higashi again couldn't quite finish his chance. Sanfrecce dominating the first quarter and Higashi's perseverance would pay off. Tsukasa Morishima strike, putting them one up. Eight minutes from half time, and it's a very crowded six yard box when the corner comes over. But as everybody gets dragged out, Douglas Vieira finds some space at the far post, and that's 2 0. After a fine first half, Higashi continued his good form in the second. How about this effort? 
back off the crossbar. Seven minutes into the second half, Yokohama looking to pull one back, but some unorthodox defending from Yuki Nogami denies them. The penalty spot area very densely populated as the corner comes in. Finally, there's a chance at the far post, but more good defending this time from Kawabe. Hiroshima get all three points on the road. Unbeaten Nagoya Grampus were back in action after their round seven match was postponed, and they'd be hoping that the interruption had no impact as they hosted a resurgent Kashiwa Reisol who'd won three straight games. Nagoya on the attack early on, a superb through ball down the channel, but Kosuke Nakamura very quick off his line. 10 minutes in and the visitors have a chance. Strong running by Olunga on the left-hand side of the field. He checks back and plays in his teammate, but good defending keeps the score at nil-nil. Midway through the first half and Nagoya's Jao Schmidt playing a delicate ball in with his left foot. Naoki Maeda just wide with his header. Mateus with the free kick, he puts the knuckler on that ball. Prevents the goalkeeper Nakamura from catching it cleanly, but he parries it away, no danger. Plenty of action in the first half, but no goals to show for all the effort. Mu Kanazaki with the final chance of the first 45 minutes. His header over the bar. And it looked like Kanazaki needed to reset his sights. Ten minutes into the second half, he met this cross first time, but straight into the side netting. If there was one man on the field destined to break the deadlock, it was Olunga. But all of the credit surely must go to Ataro Isaka for that super ball to find his feet. 1-0. After losing two in a row, Urawa Reds managed to turn things around in round seven. This week, they were up against Shimitsu S. Pulse, who seized their long-awaited victory last time out and would be looking for more points at the Todoroki Stadium. Patrick Kinghorn has your commentary. It's a nice layoff. Can we get a goal just before the water break here? Thomas Deng with a challenge, and that's going to be a free kick right on the edge of the area. And I think the card's coming out again. So, what can Nishizawa do from here? Oh, very nearly. Deflected over the wall, flicked over the bar. Oh, that's looped over and off the crossbar. Well, it took a deflection. I don't think it could get back there. Not the other end now. It's three on two in Shimizu S. Pulse's favour. Shimizu, can they make the breakthrough? Headed a great save from Nishikawa straight at him. But he blocks it with his legs. It's a clumsy coming together. Sakine does succeed in winning the throw and he finds Leonardo as well. Leonardo, chance on the edge of the area, Leonardo! He's done it again! His fourth of the season and six days after he opened the scoring at Yokohama, he's done the same here at Saitama and the Red Diamonds lead and Shimizu S. Pole simply cannot afford to give a man of Leonardo's quality that much time and space. Look at this. Still had lots of work to do. Sugimoto, he couldn't find him. Maybe a bit lucky with a deflection, but he calmly picked his spot and slid it past Togo Yamada. Leonardo makes it two and two and four for the season. Decent header. Thomas Deng does enough. Leonardo's clearance is not a good one, though. And here's a chance for Shimizu S. Pulse with plenty of fresh legs on the field. Driving through, and the cross is a good one, and the head is in! And there's equaliser with five minutes to go to nothing! And it's the man that's been lurking at every set piece through the match. Valdo has levelled it up. Shimizu S. Pulse, who are playing like a side who need a week to score a goal for the most part of the afternoon and evening, have finally made the pressure tell from set pieces. It's taken 12 corners, but in the second phase, a lovely cross to the edge of the six yard box. And that was a sensational finish from Valdo.
And the referee, Yusuke Araki, blows for full time. It's finished here at the Saitama. The Arara Red Diamonds won. Shimizu S Pulse won. To the capital we go now, and fourth-placed FC Tokyo had only come away with two points from the last two games. The visitors, Sagan Tosu, were still without a win and sat in 15th place. In the middle of your screen, the purple-shirted number seven, Hirotaka Mita, makes his run deep into the box, gets his head on the end of that cross, but too high. As this ball gets played in from the right-hand side, Kaisei Ishii, perhaps fortunate not to have been penalised for handball. Referee waves play on, but his shot not quite good enough. Fabulous ball over the top here, finds Kensuke Nagai. His little touch for Diego Oliveira hits the post. Leandro must score! Well, there would eventually be a goal at the other end of the field, though. Yuto Ichida with a bad miss kick. It falls to Ishii, who makes it 1-0. Six minutes before half-time, Leandro bends in the free kick, and that's an awful mistake from Yohei Takaoka in goal. But his teammate Ryoya Morishita would help him out at the other end of the field. A drive from distance, goalkeeper gets a hand to that one, but can only push it onto the post and into the net. 11 minutes into the second half, well-worked corner played into the edge of the box and Cho dong is hanging around the six-yard box looking to tidy it up. And that's another strike for Sagantosu. There was still time for FC Tokyo to pull one back. As the goalkeeper punches this one into the air, it touches him, the defender and the attacker. But Taichi Hara is the one credited with the goal. That's 3-2. Desperately looking for the equaliser in time added on for stoppages. Arthur Silva drills one from distance, but that's just over the bar. Away win. We'll be coming right back on the J1 League Goal Zone and when we do, it's time for the top two in the table to go head to head. Non-stop highlights and all the goals from Japan's top division, you're watching the J1 League Goal Zone Show. Cereza Osaka came into this one on the back of two draws, boasting a solid defence as they travelled to face Shonan Belmare, who grabbed their first three points in the last round. Some very laid-back defensive passing from Cereza's Yusuke Maruhashi almost led to the opening goal, Takuya Akamoto going close. On the half-hour mark, Cerezo's Leandro da Sabato with a cross from the right-hand side. Koji Suzuki does well to get there first, but can't get that one on target. Goalless in the first 45 minutes then, and now Yuki Fujita would have the first chance of the second half, but he just drags that one wide of the upright. Cerezo Osaka still looking for the opening goal. Good cross from Yosuke Maruhashi. Hiraoke Okuno perhaps made his run a little bit too early. This one coming off his chest and into the goalkeeper's arms. The opening goal came from a penalty. Kazuaki Mawatari giving Tachuhiro Sakamoto a little push in the back. Hiroshi Kiyotake spanking that one to his left-hand side. Shonan Belmare losing the ball on the halfway line. Cerezo outnumbered, but they make good work of it. Yuto Toyakawa's shot saved by the goalkeeper. Now to that showdown between the top two teams. The visitors, Kawasaki, were undefeated and came into this one with six straight wins. Second placed Gamba earned a significant victory over Vissel Kobe in the previous round and were only three points behind Frontale. Here's Mark Richmond. Here's another Rookie of the Year from 2016, Ediguchi. Trying to get things going, Yuji Ono trying to drop it into space. Not far away, Watanabe. Fujiharu, Ono does well enough against Jesse L. There is cover, there always is. Wakizaka coming right back, that's a very poor ball, hit right across and an opportunity for Onose. 
comes off the upright, and Yamane, he's gotten out of prison. Yajima trying to work the one-two with Ono. The ball doesn't get in front of Ono, but instead it takes a lucky deflection, and the break is right on. Usami, it is almost a three-on-four break now for Gamba Osaka. Takashi Usami! On target, beaten away by Sung Ryong, only as far as Watanabe. Higashiguchi, Mitoma, finding some room, still Mitoma, taking them all on. Oh, what an impact that would have been from the substitute. And all of a sudden, Kawasaki Frontale are finding a lot more room behind this uh, Gamba Osaka defense at the start of the second half. Here's another shot into the back of the net. They always score Kawasaki Frontale, and they have done so. Ryota Oshima, who scored here last season, has done so again in 2020 with a perfect strike, teed up by Kaoru Mitoma, who's come on and made a huge difference already ahead of Wakizaka, the goal scorer. Trying to be goal creator now. Teed it up nice enough for off the upright. Very, very close to goal number two, Kobayashi. A chance for the breakaway right now for Kawasaki Frontale. Players in white just moving forward in unison. The shot is on. Oh, it was flying into the back of the net, if not for that flying save by Higashiguchi. And now they might be at the mercy of a counter-attack. Oh, Leandro Damiao spotted Higashiguchi off his line, but couldn't affect it. They win this one against Gamba Osaka, the second place side, by a goal to nil, scored by Ryota Oshima. At the Showa Denko Dome and Oita Trinita had lost three in a row. They hosted a Kashima side who seemed to have found their scoring boots and a fully fit Everaldo would be key in this one. It only took five minutes for Oita Trinita to get the first goal of the game, Yuya Takazawa from 30 yards. But 10 minutes later, Kashima Antlers were back on level terms. The Oita defense not seeming to be the quickest. Everaldo takes advantage of that and it's 1-1. Watch the Oita goalkeeper Shun Takagi makes three distinct challenges in and around his penalty box, gets none of them. Eventually the ball falls to Yasushi Endo, who really should have done better. Takagi's recklessness leads to more trouble. Ryuji Izumi fouled and that's a penalty. Everaldo, who got the first goal, steps up and that's a very well executed spot kick. Eight minutes into the second half and Oita thought they'd found an equaliser. Toshio Shimakawa puts the ball into the net but Watari was interfering with the goalkeeper's sight. Ruled offside, no goal. Two minutes later and some very intricate work eventually gives Everaldo another chance. He struggles to get the ball out from under his feet, but that's his hat-trick. 13 minutes left and Oita looking to get back into the game. Yuki Kagawa with the cross, Kazuhiro Sato's header just over the bar. Trying to defend their lead by swallowing up some time, Kashima bring on Sho Ito and then he steals the fourth goal of the game, so a very comfortable away win for the Antlers. Hokkaido Consadole Sapporo were playing their third home game in a row, and they were undefeated in six games, having found goals even in the absence of Musashi Suzuki. Vissel Kobe hadn't scored for the last two games and desperately needed to find their scoring feet. Shazad Hak with your commentary. Just haven't really shown anything in the final third yet, have they, Kobe? Going for goal here! Oh, the keeper was completely caught unawares. And Takamine thought, why not? Komai. Well, it says 50... 50, 50 possessions, 7 to 1, the shots. Oh, that's a mistake and a lovely finish! And they take the lead, deservedly. Consadole Sapporo. That man again on the score sheet. Takuma Arano.
A very, very good finish after a mistake from Thomas Vermaelen. What was he thinking there? And great improvisation from Arano. Well, he's got to do better than that, Thomas Vermaelen. An unconvincing header. Was he trying to play that back to the goalkeeper who hesitated, but I don't think he was going to make it anyway. Oh, a great chance here to take them back completely out of the blue. Visso Kobe have drawn level in their best attack so far. They've shown absolutely nothing going forward. That's poor defending, really, and you've got to give a lot of credit there to Douglas. And Yamaguchi, they sucked in all the defenders there. Yamaguchi took that extremely well. That's a better ball. Can they finish it off? Yes, they can. Well, well. It was the patient probing approach. And it started from the pass all the way back from Andres Iniesta out on that right hand side. Here he is. Spotted the run. It's a delightful ball. Suga was clumsy. Really good ball from him. And that's what he can do. Well, that was taken. Really, really well. You've got to say Daigo Nishi played an important part in that. Flag stays down. Chana tip. Lovely ball. Keeper confused. No foul on him. And Arano makes it two for him. And Sapporo on the on the 48th minute, again, China tip instrumental. He was onside here, Arano. Komai spotted China tip and a lovely return ball. Was there any contact between Arano and the goalkeeper, Ikura? I don't think enough to warrant any kind of foul there. Komai with the return ball. Could have been a case. Of course, there's no VAR to overrule a goal at the moment, not till the end of the season. Here's Osaki. Sakai. Yeah. Oh, they've got a third. Again, against the run of play, Yamaguchi has given them the lead for the second time in this game. Well, they just seem to switch off here. It was a poor, poor ball. Actually, it was Shindo with the poor pass. And a fine finish from Yamaguchi again. He's hit that into the corner brilliantly. And any second now, the referee blows for full time. A game in which Visso Kobe were largely outplayed in the first half, but yet somehow found themselves in front. The final score here at the Sapporo Dome. It's Hokkaido's Consonale Sapporo 2, Visso Kobe 3. And so, a last-second strike helped the Marinos snatch their third league victory of the season, and a goal for Kashiwa was enough to end Nagoya's unbeaten run. Shimitsu denied Urawa their fifth win with both sides sharing the points, and Sagan Tosu pulled off a surprise 3-2 victory in Tokyo to claim their first win of the season. A hat-trick for Everaldo secured three points for Kashima, and for the first time this season, not a single home team managed to get three points. Seven wins in a row now means Kawasaki maintain their lead at the top with 22 points, Cerezo move up into second on 17, one ahead of local rivals Gamba. Another win for Kashiwa sees them take fourth, with FC Tokyo dropping two spots into sixth on 14 points. Kashima's win moves them off the bottom into 12th, while Yokohama FC dropped down to 17th with their fourth straight loss. Another loss and Shonen find themselves in last place on four points, but they'd be thankful there'll be no relegation this season. That wraps up another edition of the J1 League Goal Zone Show. My name's Steve Dawson and we'll see you next time when we bring you all of the goals from Japan's top flight. <laughs>